up in prayer, sis? Yes. Thank you. Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day, Father thank God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that we can come together, Father God, and and listen to your word, Father God, and read your word, Father God, and we just give you the glory for all of this freedom, Father God, and we just praise you and thank you and bless you, Father, for this wonderful, wonderful day that we're having in your word today. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So it's Numbers chapter 5, starting in verse 12. And then we're also going to be in Matthew uh, chapter 27, verse 34. So um, again, Psalm 31, 18, Let the lips of the wicked be silent, for they speak falsely and disdainfully against the righteous. Uh, we're going to jump right into um, can you find scripture that speaks about magic potions. Well, I'm glad you asked that because we're going to start with magic. It, what exactly is magic? What exactly is Witchcraft. a potion? So uh, I'm going to read to you uh, an excerpt out of the Prophet's Dictionary. And uh, again, it's about what is our topic? Magic in scriptures. It's all over the scriptures. It's uh, the unlawful manipulation coercion or intrusion into the supernatural for ungodly reasons. For Interesting. Ungodly. Yes. For the word magic comes from the Latin magica to mean arts. The Greek term for the word is magic, which means techne. Or I like the idea if you think about technology. Mm, interesting, huh? Wow. wow. Oh, the last one is the prefix of our words, technique or technical. Coming from the magi, magic emulates <laughs> their archaic skill in curious arts or witchcraft or sorcery. Coming from the magi, remember that, okay? That's interesting. That's very nice. Okay, so we're going to say this. Practically, magic is an art in which supernaturally skilled persons who imbibed, I'm sorry, <coughs> supernatural, practically magic is an art in which supernaturally skilled persons exercise unauthorized spiritual power to technocraft the invisible forces, sources, and resources of creation for devious and detrimental reasons. Now think about that, how that would um, kind of play into what we're seeing right now happening in the world. The New Testament word for magic is pharmakia because so much of its success depends on drugs and intoxication. Hallucinogenics are its prime agents. This feature is in keeping with the ancient and early rituals of primitive peoples who imbibed before, during, and after worship rituals and ingested hallucinogens to see and hear their gods. It is interesting to note, therefore, how drug addiction rises and grips cultures that promote and permit magic. The Hebrew word for magic is kashaf, which means to whisper a spell, to enchant, or to practice magic. If you look in Galatians chapter 5 verse 20, you'll find witchcraft is a work of the flesh. The link between magic and ancient Persian magi was that ma magicians are priests, making them idolaters worshiping the same pagan deities that proliferated the old world. Magicians, consequently, are priests of fallen angels masquerading as deities from another world. Now, remember, this is from the uh, Prophet's Dictionary. Uh, not necessarily, um, I, I don't necessarily agree with everything, but it's interesting to hear what is being said, and then we're going to apply it to the Word of God. Or we're going to find it in the Word of God. Practitioners of magic claim that there are two types of magic. White magic, which is supposedly harmless, and black magic, which is harmful. On the surface, this sounds innocent until one realizes that the operations and objects of the two are essentially the same. 
with the only difference being varying degrees of manipulation. So if you're practicing witchcraft, you're manipulating control or you're manipulating or controlling somebody or something to get results that you want. Both forms aim to use or misuse the supernatural for purely selfish ends. You know, let's do this for somebody, pay me, I'll, I'll, I'll make a potion for you. Oh yeah, we're talking about magic potions. Both ignore the inscribed laws upon creation and clash with Yahuwah's protocratic forces ordained to uphold them. Both forms also reject the notion of human free will, taking delight in overriding a person's will for love, service, giving, and other behaviors that they would ordinarily refuse. So in other words, it's going to be forced on you whether you want it or not. Does that sound like something that we've been hearing about? Mm -hmm. Something that's going to be forced on you whether you want it or not? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, y'all read between the lines. Whatever magicians want a person to do and for whatever reason, regardless of how mild the form of manipulation and control, their sorcery intends to achieve. So it doesn't matter if it's mild or very, very strong. It's still manipulation. And again, I'm reading out of the Prophet's Dictionary. When it comes to white magic and white witches claims to harm none, the witch's credo, so to speak, the truth is that is impossible. To take what is not given or one's own and to conjure what is not earned or deserved, to influence what is normally out of the scope of human effect affectation is harmful to those targeted. Wow, those targeted. Who are being targeted? Everybody on the planet. Mm -hmm. Wow. Don't want to conjure anything. Okay. Yeah. Everybody on the planet to target. Magic includes sorcery, witchcraft, incantations, enchantments, wizardry, spells, and spell castings, and hmm, demonism of all kinds. Imagine that. Yes, magic potion making is right in there in the mix of that. The premise of magic stems from the illegal entrance of the fallen angels into the earth. So we're going to go all the way back to Genesis on this. This is prior to their Revelation 12.12 relegation by the Almighty, Yahuwah, to, to the earth realms. The invasion that introduced and propagated magic is found in Genesis chapter 6. Jude 1, and it's only one chapter, so it's Jude 1, 1 through 8. And 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, but the whole entire chapter pertains. These rebel beings succeeded in exercising their transcendental powers over humanity because of the darkness. Pull that word out, transcendental. Transcendental powers. You ever heard of transcendental meditation? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's one of the things that brings you right into this. So these rebel beings succeeded in exercising their transcendental powers over humanity because of the darkness of Adam's transgression that was bred into them. To use people and operate through them, the devils and demons imparted their spiritual knowledge to those that they fused with in the flesh. So when the angels came and had children with the the human women, that's what? You just told me to look it up. N no, not right now. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> she looked it up for me. Um, but such knowledge... Uh, was then it that in other words when the angels and the women had progeny the the angels the demon the the non-holy angels at that point demons they were sharing all this information with human women and it just got passed right on down the line you know herbal herbal uh, remedies and all kind of potions and stuff like that so such knowledge then accepted as magic from the magi today included knowledge of physics, kinetics, herbs, herbs, whatever you want to call them, astronomy, and other numinous information to later become the intelligence substructure of human wisdom. Isn't that interesting why everything kind of goes back to, you know, the supernatural? Um, I want to be a God. I want to be like God. I want to know everything God knows. And I think it's Genesis chapter 40, verse 8. There's some stuff God ain't going to let you know, saints. You might as well just forget it. Sharing the information they needed to control the human race, these superior creatures established priests 
to exercise their powers to, now listen to this, to suppress the community and manipulate the worshipers. Ew! So if, we do the re- if we do the research, we'd, we'd have our eyes open, wouldn't we? Mm-hmm. A body of rites and observances using drugs and oblations contrived a religion that allowed the fallen spirits to maintain a steady stream of supernatural maneuvers to retain control and compel what do you call that word? OBS? Obesence? Obesence? In other words, they were using manipulation and control tactics to gain obedience from their followers. Obedience. So I want you to, obedience, I want you to think that you're free. Okay, I want you to think that you're free. But because I'm allowing you to think you're free and you really think you're free, I'm controlling everything you're doing. You just think you're free. Wow. Yeah. That's what's happening now. Under the guise of deity, they kept up a continual institution of sacrifice, slaughter, and ritual to hold on to their entrance and exit privileges to and from the planet. In other words, a demon has to have an entrance into and out of a planet. There has to be a portal. There has to be a gate. There has to be a door. You ain't coming in unless you come through the door. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. You can go in and you can come out. But the only way to get to the Father, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except by me. Yahushua Hamashiach Hamashiach is the door. There's no other way in. There's no other way out. He is the door. And if you go the back door and you ascend... And you worship angels and you go in the back door. What do you need Jesus for? Hmm, think about that. He said, I am the door. Somebody going to be in trouble. Wake up, saints. They're, they're, oh, the demon's ultimate goal is to populate the earth with their spiritual seeds. Okay? Think about that. So if you get enough evil seed, the evil th- seed thinks it's going to overtake the good seed. Y'all with me? Yes. Okay. So yes. there's magic. Okay. That, that's a good understanding of magic according to that. But uh, think about what the Word of God says. I think it's in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31. Let me see if I got that right. 1931. <laughs> or it might be thir- 19. Yeah. Let me see. You shall not go after diviners neither after the soothsayers, nor shall you consult them to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So he tells you right there, you are not to be going after magic and soothsayers and diviners, which you're you're talking about sorcerers. You're talking about workers of witchcraft, uh, you know, magic. And that's just one, that's just one scripture, saints. Leviticus what? 1931 so when we're talking about where did magic come from and and is there magic potion being spoken of in scripture yes there is again that's in um what was it our our scripture reference 521 that i keep saying numbers (laughs) numbers numbers 512 through 31 Uh, this was a potion made by the high priest um we'll get there in a minute but let's go to the beginning of where all this um, demonic energy, I'll call it, came from. And that is in Genesis chapter 6. So you're going right back to what we've already covered in previous teachings. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, those were the, the angels, saw that the daughters of men were fair, so they took them wives of all whom they chose. Yeah, they seen them beautiful women and decided they're taking their pick of them. When the Lord said, My spirit shall not dwell in man forever because he is flesh, let his days be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also after that, for the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, and they became giants, who in the olden days were mighty men of renown. And I can guarantee you they told mamas, how to practice all kind of supernatural arts. 
The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy men from whom I've created from the face of the earth, both men and animals and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. I am sorry that I've made them, but Noah, <laughs> but Noah found mercy in the eyes of the Lord. So let me explain something to you real simple saints. Eight people made it onto the boat. Eight human beings. There's a lot of folks back then, and eight people made it. The women, the children, the men, they all drowned. Eight people. So it don't look good for a whole lot of folks today. You get right with the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one's coming to the Father except through the door, who is Yahushua. Jude. Let's go over to Jude. That's right before Revelation. I know y'all know that. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I hope you know it. Yeah. You know, Jude and Revelation. Mm -hmm. uh, Jude chapter 1. There's only one chapter. Verse <laughs> 6. And the angels which did not keep their first estate but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under the darkness until the judgment of that great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities, which in like manner gave themselves over to fornication and followed after other carnal lusts, are condemned to judgment and placed under everlasting fire, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise authority, and blaspheme against the glory. Let's just sum that up real quick. The angels going to be put in the lake of fire and all liars, all fornicators, idolaters, whoremongers, homosexuals, you just name the list, they're going to go too. Yeah. Yeah, all liars. I don't it don't matter. Any carnal lust. It yeah, car, well it says right there. Mm -hmm. What? Carnal lust? Mm -hmm. Fornications? Mm -hmm. Following after strange flesh? Right. Defiling the flesh, filthy dreamers. So What's the point? Repent, turn from the wickedness, and receive Christ as Lord. He is the door, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except by Yahushua. If you go in any other way, and he said it, it's, it's like being a thief or a robber. So if you go into and out of heaven without going through the door, guess what? It ain't going to work. How about 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4? 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for tormenting judgment. And now I'm going to read on a little bit further. And he did not spare the old world, but saved Noah the preacher of righteousness with his family, eight and all, when he was brought the flood, when he brought the flood upon the wicked people. And he set afire the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and condemned them with an upheaval, making them an example to those who hereafter should live ungodly lives. And delivered righteous lot, mor what? Mortified by the filthy conduct of lawless. For while the pious man dwelt among them in seeing and hearing their unlawful deeds, his righteous soul was vexed from day to day. I love this next one. This is for all of us today. The Lord knows how to deliver from distress those who revere him, and he will reserve the wicked to be punished until the judgment day. People do not want to hear the truth. You don't want to hear about the judgment day. You don't want to hear about the fact that there is a consequence of breaking God's laws. These are the Lord's laws. These are not man's laws. Especially, and he will punish those who follow after filthy lusts of the flesh and have no respect for authority. Bold and self-willed are they who do not tremble when they blaspheme against the glory. Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring upon themselves the condemnation of blasphemy. There is no reverence for the Lord 
on this earth today. And the ones that say they're reverencing him, we're all included. How many times have we been doing our woohoo, hallelujah, hot dog, flip flop worship, and it ain't nothing but show. Until we seriously break self down and conquer that lust, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, we're still just worshiping in vain, saints. It's time for us to worship in spirit and in truth. There's a lot of people that love the Lord are worshiping in spirit and truth, but there's a lot more that say they love him and they're not. That's between you and God. You better get right. But these men as natural brute beasts made for slaughter and destruction speak evil of the things which they do not understand and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And shall receive the reward of iniquity as they consider it a delightful thing to revel in the daytime. Spots and blemishes have they and sport themselves with their own pleasures as they feast in idleness. Second Peter 3.14 And have eyes full of adultery and of sin that does not cease. Beguiling unstable souls are they whose hearts are well versed in covetousness, accursed sons are they. Oh, wow. You're talking about believers? That can quote scriptures? Who have forsaken the right path and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness? Prosperity gospel preachers, maybe? Why don't you send God a seed faith offering? Make a deal with him. This is let's make a deal. Do you want door number one, door number two, or door number three? Let's make a deal with God. Send your seed money in, and we guarantee you're going to get results. That's a lie, saints. You ain't got to pay God no, to do what Jesus has already you. done on the cross for you. No, Wake right. up. Verse 16. But who was rebuked for his iniquity, that's Balaam, a dumb ass, that's what the word says, speaking with a man's voice, halted the folly of the prophet. These men are springs without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest. The mist of darkness is reserved for them forever, saints. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure. Woo! through the sensual lusts of the flesh. But there are those who flee at a we at a word of warning from them who live in error. There are some that'll flee from that. Yes. They while they promise liberty, the, now here's the key, themselves are slaves of corruption, for a man is overcome by whatever it is that enslaves him. I want you to look around at what's going on. Look around, look at the the news Look at television, look at whatever you're going to look at because you're looking at it, YouTube, Facebook. They, while they promise you liberty, saints, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever a man is overcome by, that is what enslaves him. For it is after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that they are again entangled by the very things and overcome and the latter end is worse with them than the beginning barely it would not have been better for them not to have known the way what barely it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment that was delivered to them just so you know if you're a once saved always saved doctrinal believer there's your scripture there's your scripture debunks that let me read that again once saved always saved crowd verily it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment that was delivered to them it will come to pass with them according to the true proverb the dog returns to his own vomit and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the ooh, mire once saved, always saved, folks. I love you. But if you continue in your sin, you're fooling yourself. Wake up. Grow up. In magic, in the New Testament, the word is pharmakia. That means drugs. 
That means witchcraft, sorcery, which is magic, pharmakia, based in drugs, the root. The root refers to drugs, potions, poisons, and venom. The blood pressure medication some folk taking, it's got snake venom in it. Do your research. If it's pharmakia, it's medicine. It's a potion. Yeah. Just truck on down there to the pharmacy. They'll tell you. Let's go to Numbers chapter 5, verses 12 through 31. I'm going to read this to you. And um, I don't know about y'all. Do your, do your own research. But this is a potion. And I'm going to just go ahead and pop this in there to you. It's called Sympathetic Magic. And if you've never heard of this, there is a law of contagion. Oh, I said law of contagion. We're going to get there. Because Numbers 5, 12 through 31, we'll talk about sympathetic, sympathetic, mag sympathetic magic and the law of contagion. So stick a pin in that, saints. Uh, Numbers chapter 5, verse 12. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, If any man's wife does wrong and commits a trespass against him, and a man lies with her carnally and is hidden from the eyes of her husband, and the act is kept secret, and she is defiled, and there is no witness against her, neither is she caught in the act. And the temper of jealousy comes upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she is defiled. Or if the temper of jealousy comes upon him, and he becomes jealous of his wife, and she is not defiled, then the man shall bring his wife to the priest, and sh he shall bring his offering a tenth part of an epaph of barley flour, and he shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense upon it, for it is a meal offering of jealousy, a meal offering for a memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near, and she shall stand before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and some of the dust that is in the base of the altar of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. Okay? You got holy water. You got some dust that is at the base of the earthen vessel. Okay? I'm sorry. The dust that is at the base of the altar, altar of the tabernacle. And the priest shall take it and put it in the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and shave the woman's head and put off the offering of memorial in her hands which is the jealousy offering and the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water of testing and the priest shall charge the woman by an oath and say to her if no man is lain with you beside your husband and if you have not done wrong and become unclean be absolved from these charges by this bitter water of testing but if you have done wrong by having lain with another man beside your husband, and if you have defiled yourself and some other man has lain with you beside your husband, then the priest shall adjure the woman of the oaths of cursing, and the priest shall say to the woman, The Lord make you a curse and an oath among your people, when the Lord makes your thigh to rot and your belly to swell. And this water of testing shall go into your belly and make your belly to swell and your thighs to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall... Now, here's the key. This is where sympathetic magic, the law of contagion, and where you got a potion here. And the priest shall write these curses in a book. And he shall blot out the writing in the water of testing. And he shall make the woman drink the water, the bitter water of testing. And the water of testing shall enter into her to try her. You're talking about the, the ink, uh, whatever the, is in, in the writing. And it's going to be soaked into the water with the dust. Okay? Then the priest shall, verse 25, the priest shall take the jealousy meal offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave the meal offering before the Lord and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take some of the meal offering as the memorial thereof and burn it upon the altar. Remember, there's all kind of ashes from all kind of offerings around the base of that altar. And that's what went into that water. Afterward shall make the woman drink the water. And when she has made her drink of water, if she has defiled herself and has committed iniquity against her husband, the water of testing shall enter into her 
and shall try her. And if her belly shall swell and her thighs shall rot, then the woman shall be a curse among her people. But if the woman has not defiled herself but is pure, then she shall be absolved and shall bear a male child. I'm going to quit right there because I just want to explain to you about what sympathetic magic is. And back then in old rituals, they did these things. The priests did these things. And uh, this was before Yahushua came on the scene. And uh, this is judgment, saints. This is judgment. This is drinking a potion, believing in a ritual. And when you're talking about sympathetic magic, it's a primitive or magical ritual using objects or actions resembling or symbolically, remember that, symbolically associated with the event or person over which influence is sought you've got a woman that's scared back then they didn't have any rights and she's like yeah i'm gonna do this and i know and she knows if she's innocent she's not gonna die because they believe in what they're doing you know she's gonna be absolved from all guilt but guess what if poor girl is guilty she's already made up in her mind she's gonna die she's believing it you've got to believe it and receive it it don't matter if the priest is doing it or some witch is doing it or some warlock you have to buy into it you have to buy into this stuff saints you have to buy into what's going on right now in the world you have to accept it as the truth because once you buy into it you're hooked that's how that works. Yeah. Now, we're seeing a priest make a potion, give it to a woman. She drinks it, and she's already decided. She already knows if she's guilty or not guilty. So she already knows because it's their, it's their custom. It's their custom. Okay? You don't want to be a woman back then. Okay? Because you have no rights. The point is, is that she was in agreement with it. This was what she believed. This was her her religion. Okay? So, again, believe it, receive it. If you don't want it, reject it. Same thing with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you want it, receive it. If you don't, reject it. It's up to you. It's an act of your will, okay? So if you're practicing magic, it's an act of the will. It doesn't matter if you find a magic potion in the Bible or in, in some other form of um, supernatural means. We'll just put it that way. So what does this have to do with the, the, the potion speaking? Is, is uh, scripture speaking of a potion? So would y'all agree that that looks like a potion? Yeah. Now, how does it become a magic potion? I mean, think about that. How does it become a magic potion? I don't think, I think it's a bunch of bull. I don't think it's magic at all. M magicians? Well, it depend on the, it depend on the, to me. He was a witch doctor. Well, was he, was it a pagan? No, it was a priest. It was a priest. This is a priest doing this. This was their religion, okay? It was their religion. It, it's This is Judaism. Oh, okay. But who's behind it? Who's That's behind it? Okay, yes, if you indeed. read it, if you read it, God allowed it. Yeah. He oh, did. yeah, okay? But, but This was before Yahushua. Oh, yeah. This was their laws. Laws, remember? Yes. yes. They didn't have mercy, okay? If your kid got caught uh, doing something really yeah. bad, yeah. and, you know, you're yeah. going to know the parents are going to take them and stone them to death. This yeah. is Old Testament, Testament, okay? This is under the law, okay? So when you're under the law, you do what the law says. If you break the law, you suffer the consequences. This is the consequence of breaking a law. Yes, of adultery. Okay? So it's called sympathetic magic. Okay. You have to believe in it. You have to receive it. And there is a spiritual connection here. Okay? So how does it become sympathetic magic? How does that potion become magic? Well, partly you have to believe in it. Then you have to receive it. And then you have to speak it out of your mouth. Here's the connection. You have to speak it out of the mouth. In verse 19, the priest shall charge the woman by an oath. 
She's got to take this oath. She's got to say it. He's not just saying it over her. She's actually oh. reciting the oath. The priest shall charge the woman by an oath and say to her, "If okay, now if no man is laying with you, then you're okay. But if you've done wrong, you're you're in trouble. You're gonna yeah you're gonna yeah this is not gonna turn out good for you." Now, verse 21, the priest shall adjure the woman with the oaths of cursing, and the priest shall say to the woman, the Lord make you a curse, and this is where it comes in and becomes supernatural. It becomes supernatural. It becomes real at this point. Oh. The Lord make you a curse and an oath among your people when the Lord makes your thigh to rot and your belly to swell. They're putting all of the, the all of, it's all on God, okay? Yeah. And this water of testing shall go into your belly and make your belly to swell and your thighs to rot. And the woman shall say, what does she reply? Amen. She agrees. Amen. Amen. But that, in, that like invokes it. That invokes it. Says, it. it how done. does that become, how is that magic? Because it's, it, that means it's done. Okay, so is that magic yeah if she speaks it out okay if she speaks it out of her mouth it okay in, she it let it she be agreed to it yeah she confessed it and she sealed it with her yes the amen that that's amen that's right so now you see it's become supernatural it's become magic it's sympathetic magic because it's a magical ritual using an object or an action resembling or symbolically associated with the person or the event over which influence is sought. Now, we have an event going on right now in this entire world. There is an event going on. Would you, yes. would you go with me just a second on this ride? Okay? It's a free, it's free. It don't cost you nothing. Okay? It is. When you're dealing with an event or a person that you have to influence and you can get them to think in their head, receive in their heart and confess with their mouth, you got them. If you can get folks to say I don't want the disease. I don't want the consequences. I'm not receiving it. I'm not accepting it. I'm going to look into this. This is not. Wait a minute. We're going to do something to make you think that this is what you're going to receive. It's the, your lot in life. And we're going to hit you with it so many times that you're going to accept it. You're going to believe it, receive it, recite it with your own mouth, and we got gotcha. you. And there's power in the tongue. And there is power. power. The there, power of life and, and death, death is in, in the, the tongue. tongue. Do not receive right. a curse. It's right here. The, the priest tells her. The priest shall adjure the woman and... and uh, Numbers 5, 21, with the oaths of cursing, and the priest shall say to the woman, the Lord make you a curse and an oath among your people. When the Lord, when the Lord, saints, do not receive a curse from anyone, your pastor, your mama, your daddy, your stepchild, your biological, biological child, your parents, do not receive a curse. You have to stand up and you have to say, I know what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that I am not cursed. The Word of God says that I have been healed by Christ's stripes. The Word of God says it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. I don't need your money. I don't need your honey. I've got a supply and it's perfect. It's completely perfect, and nobody can outgive my God, who is Yahuwah. Yahushua is Yahuwah in the flesh, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Do not accept this curse. This you have to believe it, receive it, confess it. Now, this is the good news. If you turn that around and you're cursed, if you believe Jesus and you receive Jesus, who is Yahushua HaMashiach, 
believe him receive him and then confess with your mouth the devil will hate you but guess what who cares he's a defeated foe we are not fighting a battle that we have to win we have to engage on the battlefield saints but if we don't know what our rights are and we accept a curse we receive a curse and then we agree with it out of our face saints don't agree with a curse stop it if people put stuff on my page and they're cursing me or anything about God, I'm going to reply and I'm going to say, I'm not receiving that. That is not what the Word of God says. I'm not receiving it. And let me explain this to you, what comes out of your mouth. You're going to eat those words. Right. Did your mama ever tell you you're going to eat them words, sister? Yeah, Brother, yeah, you're going to yeah. eat them words? Yeah. The power of life and death is in the, the tongue, and them that love it eat the fruit thereof. That's I'm going right. to eat what is good and holy and pleasing, yeah, whether it's spiritual food or whether it's physical food. Saints, it's time we woke up. We've already won. We've yes. got to enter the battlefield knowing that we've already been given the victory. What we do is we pray and ask God, give me a give me a win, give me a win, give me a win. We ain't doing a cheerleading dance here. No, Saints, gone. we already won. He said, you go to the battlefield, sister. Go to the battlefield, brother. Child, go to the battlefield. You've already won. And when you walk on that battlefield, you take that word of God and you say it is written devil it is written Goliath how dare you uncircumcised Philistine mess with my God you ain't gonna curse me you ain't gonna curse my kids you ain't gonna curse my finances you ain't sending me no disease it's time we started to stand up and fight. Amen. We ain't got to argue with the devil we ain't got to argue no. with the media we ain't got to argue with folk no. all we got to do is argue with ourselves and say would you wake up Get up. I just hit myself. Some of us need to slap ourselves and wake up, okay? Get woke. This Get woke. girl in in Numbers chapter 5 verse 21, she ex she Man. believed it, Man. received it, accepted it and agreed with it. Now let's go over to Matthew this is fun. I don't know about y'all saints, but this is fun because when we get back to the law of contagion, you're really going to like this. But check out Jesus. Jesus hanging on the cross, people. And they want to force, they want to force a magic potion on him. Yeah. Sound, sound familiar? They gave Yahushua a drink of wine mixed with drugs. After he tasted it, he would not drink it. Well, duh. <laughs> He's he, what? Y'all try y'all trying to give me some dope? Jesus hanging on the cross. They're trying to dope him up so that he can have a little bit of painkiller. Oh, well, they were showing him mercy. No, they were mocking him. Exactly. Matthew 27, 34. If you look up gall in Hebrew, it's a poisonous plant. Probably the poppy. It could be gall, hemlock, poison, venom. It's a magic potion to alter the senses. Oh, and the pain. Well. Yeah, it's 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 a magic potion. Uh -huh. Pharmacia is witchcraft. If it alters your senses, it is it's bad. It's a doorway for sure. If you it is a doorway. Marijuana, then that. any drug. Well, any it, what drug. about okay, a legal painkiller? It's it's pharmacia. It's witchcraft, saints. It's a potion. What about it? Is that it's you know what, what the reason it makes it magic is what you believe and who you think is oh. healing you. Is God your healer or is the pharmacist and the doctor your healer? Because God will use drugs to heal, but who is your healer? Is he the healer? Or is the pharmacy and the doctor? What about the drugs that make you sleep? Now check this out. In Greek, gall is col oh, cole. Number 5514. Again, a poison. I like this. Remember the boy we prayed for on Sunday and I called out wormwood? Yes. Wormwood. Oh. Poppy. Throughout this whole teaching, I have found so much stuff that was tattooed on that boy. 
Oh my gosh, God is amazing. You can't outdo God. So if you've got a woman in the Old Testament receiving, believing, receiving, and then speaking a curse over herself and re receiving that curse and agreeing to it, then you've got Jesus on the cross. He will not receive the potion. He no, will not because receive it because if you look, you're going to see that they kept offering it to him and he kept refusing it until he gave up the ghost. Okay, they forced it on him. He's like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. And it's like, can you imagine having it forced on you? Think about that. They're trying to force stuff on us right now, saying Exactly. You're going to have to make the decision just like Jesus Christ of Nazareth did. This particular one says that it was spiced with myrrh added in sufficient quantity to turn the wine into the drug. Again, remember, it's a magic oh. potion, saints. Yeah. The one that they gave Jesus. So, okay, you do have, you have instances of magic potions, but what, what makes it, what makes it magic? The force behind it that you're believing. Yes. And if you buy into it and agree with it, it becomes supernatural when you speak it out and of your mouth. fear. That woman had fear. Fear. Okay. The spirit of fear. Yes. So there's a spirit of a fear, fear behind it. Yes. Okay. And what's going on now but, in the event. Now think about it. We're in the New Testament. We have a merciful, mighty God. Yes. We have a merciful, mighty Thank God. Yes. And we call upon him even in the Old Testament. If you're innocent, you have nothing to worry about. No. Okay? We need to have some godly fear this day and age, we don't sure we? Should. Now let's go yes. back to this and let's finish up because there's so much. I got page after page, hour after hour of, of uh, looking into some of this stuff. I could go on for days, my goodness. How, let's talk about the law of contagion. Y'all want to write that down? Yeah. I look it up that. later. Law of contagion. It's a magical, magical law. Now, it says magical, but the word contagion is what I want you to focus on. This is a law. Magical law that suggests. All right. Think about the power of suggestion. Yes. Okay. The magical law that suggests that once two people or objects have been in contact a magical link persists between them unless or until a formal cleansing, consecration, exorcism, or other act of banishing breaks the non-material bond. Now I want to show you where they say the law of contagion is magical. And I want to take you to Matthew chapter 18 and I want to show you God's law. Because I don't care what man says. I don't care what magic anything says. I want to know what the word of God has to Matthew say. 18, uh, Matthew 18. Let me go there because I'm looking at the Peshitta and you know I don't have my little cheater Bible. <laughs> 19. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Woo, 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 woo. I just get excited when I see the real truth. Again, I say unto you mm -hmm. that if two of you are worthy on earth, anything that they would ask will be done for them by my Father in heaven. In the King James Version. Hi, little B, what you doing? In the King James Version, it says, If two of you shall agree as touching anything on earth. You got, anybody got a King James? No. I got a procedure. Because it uses that word, touching anything on earth. Two of you shall touch and agree. You got King James? No, but it says agree on earth about anything they ask. Okay. Well, in the King James, I think it does use the word touch or touching. The point is, is that... Everything that God has made good and acceptable and holy, the enemy counterfeits, okay? So when you're dealing with a counterfeited notion, it's counterfeited. It's, it's not the real thing. You want the real thing, and then you can go back and you can say, you're, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. And the law of contagion, a magical law that suggests that once two people or objects have been in contact, well, let's see what social distancing is about. Two people 
touching. There's got to be a minimum of six feet between you. Mm. Ladies, there's not six feet between y'all today. I know it. But we got you the breaking Holy the law, Spirit. breaking the law. We got the Holy Spirit. Breaking the law of the world. Okay, That's now check it out. No, you're breaking a magical law. A magical But look, it says if two people or two objects, like a piece of metal. Are worthy. Okay, oh, if you yeah. put your hand on metal. Yeah, we have to clean everything yeah. with the are now, now listen, check this out. Let this ring... Let this ring in. Magical law that suggests that once two people or two objects have been in contact, bam, there's a link that persists between them. But what you have to do until there is a formal cleansing, wash your hands, consecration, I'm going to set you to the side and quarantine you in your own house for 14 days. Quarantine, if you'll look it up, saints, means 40 days, not 14. Or an exorcism okay or other act of banishing breaks the non-material cord see I think in my mind I've got it so I've got to go and I've got to do these things and obey because I've already received it in my mind if I don't, so if I've received it in my mind and I've already agreed with it mm -hmm. okay I'm not saying it ain't real I'm saying you gotta believe it and receive it for it to manifest. Exactly. Okay? If you're living in sin, that's one thing. If you're not, that's totally different. You have the right to stand up and say, this is what the Word of God says, and you have to believe this more than you believe what's going on in the world. Exactly. That's the problem. That's right. So if you've got a law of contagion saints where they are pushing on you, well, they're saying it's that a curse. It's they're a, cursing everyone. They're, they're cursing everyone. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So you have, to, you have to accept it, believe it, and receive it. But I'm it. reading right here. Again, I say to you that if two of you are worthy on earth, Anything. what makes us worthy, saints? Jesus. The righteousness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For he knew him. He, he made him that knew no sin to be sin that we might be the righteousness of God Amen. in him. And if we are worthy because of his righteousness and yes. we're on earth, anything that we would ask will be done for us by the yes. Father in heaven. For wherever yes. two are, or how many? Three, Three. are gathered, gathered into my name. I'm there among them. Saints, God is right here between us. There's, there's, you know, four of us here today. Three of us are right here engaging. I can tell you this. We're agreeing on earth. We are worthy because of the righteousness of Christ, not because of our righteousness. Our righteousness is as of filthy rags, but because Jesus has made us right with the Lord, we are in a worthy standing with the Lord on this earth. We're not going to receive a curse. We're not going to believe a curse. We're not going to speak that we're in agreement with it, and we're not going to allow it nope. according to the word of God a curse without cause Cannot shall not land, land. Amen. Ah. simple enough that's right so are you going to receive it oh, and it. believe it is it going to deceive you no. into receiving? No, saints. We do not have a spirit of fear. No. We have a spirit of love, of power, and of a sound oh, mind. And because I have a sound mind and I have love and power, and I have Yahushua, I have on the breastplate of righteousness, the girdle of truth, my feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, I take up the sword. What? The, sword. the shield of faith. faith. Shield of faith. faith. It's become a bad. I don't know about y'all, but mine's become a battering ram. I picked up my sword of the spirit, which is the spoken word of God. It, they say it's the word, but honey, it's the spoken word of God. It becomes a sword when you start speaking it. You can throw your Bible at them all day long, but it ain't a sword till you start picking it up and speaking it out of your face. Okay. And let me tell you what else I got. 
I got the helmet of salvation every day. I put it on. I put that helmet of salvation on fresh every day. I receive it again, Lord. Thank you. You're in the process of saving me. I'm not there yet. I still got a ways to go. I'm working out my salvation with fear and trembling. And I'm walking this walk. And I'm talking this talk. I'm paying my dues. I'm suffering. I'm, I'm, I'm having joy. Saints, we're not going to get out of this world without some suffering and some affliction. The, the Word of God says the afflictions of the righteous are many. We... Why would we want God to take us out when he said in his word in John chapter 17, I don't want you to take them out of the world, Father. I want you to strengthen them and keep the evil one from them. Saints, we need to wake up and grow up. We're going to go through something if we want to get to where we're going. There's a reason that the path is narrow. Yeah. Because broad is the path that leads to destruction and many find it. Let me say this. Eight people made it onto Noah's Ark. Okay? Eight. It don't look good for none of us, does it? This word says, if it's possible, the very elect shall be deceived. It ain't possible, saints, if you stay in the Word and you stay with Jesus Christ because He's not going to lose one that belongs to Him. So if you've put your faith and trust in the Lord and you got that armor on and you're praying in the Spirit and you're talking to the Lord and you're taking all of these... problems and supplications and prayers before the Lord for all saints everywhere. Saints, at the end of the day, all we have to do is endure until the end. Mm -hmm. There's no disease that can touch you. There's no no harm that can come to you until allowed by our Father. Saints, you have a destiny. You have a destination. Hopefully it's heaven. And I'm pretty sure at this point in my walk with the Lord that we're going to make it to our destiny, our destination, not one minute sooner, not one minute later. Let's accept what God has given us. Pick up our cross and tote it. You know how to tote a cross? Get out. See that? See that right there? Right there. See it? It's it's right. Oh, it's that path that leads See that to path? the cross. Mm-hmm. And if you notice, it comes on around here. That's a long, narrow path, yeah. ain't it, saints? It sure is. Sister with a testimony. Saints with a saints with a testimony. Sister with a testimony. Soldier with a testimony. If you notice, the cross. Has a long path, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Wow. How many years did it take you to get from this point to this point? Mm-hmm. To the foot of the cross. You know what the problem is, saints? Don't nobody want to get up on the cross. They want to stay right down here at the foot. I'll leave you with this. Why don't you get on the cross? Huh? Get on the cross, die to self, go into the tomb for three full days and three full nights, not parts of three days and nights. And after you're dead and you're good and dead and you're resurrected by the resurrection power of the Holy Ghost, yeah. then get off the cross and guess what? You're going to have a narrow path. You have a really narrow path. And That's walk it fact. out. That's a fact. Walk out your own salvation, salvation with fear and That's trembling. I love you. God bless you. I pray in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach that not only you wake up and come out from among them and be separate, but that you wake completely up. All the scales removed. There's not going to be any more questions. You're going to get in the Word of God. I pray that you get in the Word of God, that you get in the Word of God for yourself and take that journey. Make that path. Make that path, saints. Make that path. It's a narrow one. Don't fall off it. If you do, get back up. If you got to crawl, kick, scream, 
you know, snot, blow, burp, whatever you got to do. Just get back on the path. Okay? It's called what? Repent. Mm -hmm. And um, God bless you. I love you. I hope that I see you in heaven. If I don't, I love you, love you, love you. I don't know if you're still there. I don't know how this works because I get to go and I don't know how to push some little buttons because I can push them and they don't work. Something going on with my phone. But uh, Sister um, Pastor Donna, Sister Chelsea, um, Brother Cecil, I love y'all. God bless you. Thank you for letting me know you're there. And uh, whoever else, love you. God bless you. If you're a sinner, a saint, a student, a son, soldier. a soldier, whatever you are, with a testimony, go tell somebody. You might save their life. Y'all want to, you know, anything? Y'all want to add anything? Is there scriptural proof yes. to back yes. it up. where yes. the scripture speaks of magic potions in yeah, the New yeah. and the Old Testament? Amen. Yes. And whose responsibility is it to receive this magic? Ours. And can you reject it? Yes, ma'am. Does it, and if they force it on you? Yeah, free will. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't have you to got take free it. Will. Okay. So they might, tried to force it on Jesus. Well, you might get your head cut off, but. Well, yeah, the time's coming. Yeah. Well, hey, you might get your head cut off, but you know it's gonna be quick. It and will. I'm, I pray. Hey, if, if we've got to go through that, that the guillotine is sharp. Well, the thing about it is I feel like your spirit will already be gone. And Bam! You know, Woo! You're not going to feel it. That's it. You're not hey, feel it. you know, whatever happens, Instant. happens. Yeah, I got I ain't going to receive it. Me either. I ain't going to deny that it's no. real. You know, you got people that are Christians denying that magic is real. It's not, not, not there. It's there. It's all throughout the scripture. The fact it, remains is that you either believe it and receive it or you believe it and reject it. It's just like your relationship with Yahushua. You either believe it and receive it or you reject it. It's up to the individual. Exactly. Okay? So, yes, scriptural proof. Yes. Uh, numbers 5 and... Um, what was it, 12 through 20-something? Uh, it's numbers five, 12 through 31. 12 through 31. And then it was, we looked at Matthew 27, 34. 34. Uh, yeah. And if they look up those uh, Greek and Hebrew words, they'll find out that yeah. that, was a, that was a magic potion yeah. based on pharmacia to um, drug our Savior so that he wouldn't know what was going on. He said, exactly. oh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. I learned something today. And I, I am that. definitely going to die in my right mind. I so I didn't know what gall was. You didn't know what gall was? was oh, okay, vinegar. if you look it up, saints, you'll find out that that potion, are you sour. listening? Check this out. It's green. It's green. Yeah, gall is green. It's like bile. So the yeah. concoction is green. I know, and that, and I just happen to be wearing green today, just so you know. I'm a warrior right here, mm -hmm. saint with a testimony, a soldier with a testimony, sister with a testimony. I'm a student of the Word of God with a testimony. Y'all like that? Yeah. And uh, technically, according to the Word of God, we're all sons of the Most High God, so we're all sons with a. Yes, we were, we were. sinners uh, <laughs> with a yes, testimony. We were. Now we're saints with a testimony. Yes, we were. So, um, y'all got anything else? You said you learned about gall. Mm -hmm. What about you? I thought it was you? sour wine and vinegar. What I thought it well, was. it says vinegar mm -hmm. in your Bible. Because they mistranslated it. Imagine that. But I didn't know it was uh, like pharmaceutical. a pharmaceutical. I didn't have any it's a, yeah, Honey, it's a drug. They tried to drug our Savior mm -hmm. when they were killing him. Not. Isn't that crazy? That's wild, isn't it? Miss Miss Janetta, did you did you get anything today? Oh, yes, I learned a lot today. So now we can go home and study it and get some more. Yes, we can. I tell you what, I spent about ten hours on it, oh. and I bet you there's a whole lot more. So God bless you. We love y'all. Um, sister with a testimony. Sister with a testimony. Sister with a testimony. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're knocking it out of the the Park. Atlanta oh. City Park. Oh. Home run. God bless yes. you. We love y'all.